Please be seated. How did I never know there was an air conditioning vent right here? <laughs> oh man, this is nice. <laughs> sorry, sorry, my brain just thinks it goes. All right, um, so uh, glad to have everybody here with us, uh, joining us here today uh, in person and those who are joining us online and uh, those who will be joining later on YouTube. Uh, we're glad to have you with us. Um, if, if you enjoy this, uh, share it with a friend. We, we have that ability for you. You know, on Facebook and YouTube, share it, pass it on. Um, I hope that it can be a blessing for somebody. As we welcome people here uh, to Woods United Methodist Church, we have a few announcements we want to make as we get ourselves going. And I'm going to start off with our farmer's market report. Sue, come on up. Gathering and harvest plant. You train this one. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Okay, so we had another absolutely sensational day yesterday at the market. I brought my phone so I could get my notes straight. We had 10 tables, 13 vendors, six of them were produce vendors. Two managers, we had two new vendors. One was a produce man, thanks to Kevin Webster. He recruited another one. You're right, that vent is strong. Right. And we had a woman that makes homemade breads. And for a person who swore off of breads for a while, she will break you. I'm back on breads. So um, she made two different um, flavors. Yes, three. She, I know the cheddar, and I know the rosemary. What was the third one? Sorry, trash. Oh, okay. And if you get a chance to get, come to the market, make her one of your, your definite spots. She is sensational. Um, and we also, the new produce vendor, we're very excited because he has fields He's going to have fields of pumpkins and gourds. So the KFC ladies, let's just put it this way. We've already got our heads together with what we can do with all those pumpkins and gourds. We had 41 customers and two managers and 13 vendors. It turned out to be a beautiful day, um, a nice breeze coming through, but then the fans, also helped tremendously also. So thank you again for all of your support and all of your encouragement and just keep it up because so far God has been good. When I said to him, God, we need produce. He <laughs> definitely listened. So we'll see you next week at the market. And Ken Crowder is still taking care of us out there. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. People have asked me for, for a long time, why do you make somebody come up front instead of letting them go from their seat? And at first it was because not everybody can hear you and it works better that way. Then it's, it's a more visual thing. Now it's because we're on the camera. Sure. You got to be up front um, for me to see. But I know the first time I made somebody come up, Sue came up to me, she, I just lost half my people that were going to announce that because <laughs> no one wants to come up front. Um, but, they survived. We haven't lost anybody. We're good. All right. Uh, I have uh, these announcements here from Mary. Uh, the food pantry delivery will be Thursday the 22nd. Um, if you have any items to donate, please have them here by Wednesday. Uh, we'll be going to uh, Chasm Food Pantry. Uh, the second announcement is if you have any meetings scheduled for, for the August calendar, Please put them on the calendar or um, the copier door today um, and, and, or call Mary by Tuesday. Mary, is that good? All right. Um, let's see. Um, our flowers that we have up today um, are given to the glory of God and in honor of Paula and Mike Thomas's 51st wedding anniversary, uh, which is today. Today, given by Peggy Cable. So, Peggy, that's a wonderful um, remembrance for them um, and excitement. Um, I hope that it has been a good 51 years. 
she's not looking, so you can shake your head or whatever. Okay. Oh, that's right, she's got the mirror. Never mind, don't move. There. Okay. No, I know that we were talking, it's been a very good uh, 51 years for them. Okay. Uh, so uh, the next announcement is about worship services. Um, and I want to say, since back in March um, of last year, wow, <laughs> forever, um, uh, when the pandemic hit and we had to uh, shut down worship services we were doing inside, and then we transitioned to doing things online and then limited things, um, I know it has been very frustrating for people. And I've appreciated your patience through all of this as we have been able to kind of work things out and do. Um, and changes have come along, and it's been hard sometimes just to keep up with all the changes that they're doing. Um, so now these are the new rules. Um, uh, there are still, uh, if you're vac fully vaccinated, uh, you don't have to wear a mask. And a reminder that fully vaccinated is having had uh, both your shots, if you're having uh, Moderna or Pfizer or your single shot, Johnson & Johnson, and then two weeks after that. Um, at that point, you've built up enough that, that they're, you're considered fully vaccinated. Um, if you're not, we ask you to still wear a mask. Um, that you no longer are asking for reservations for you to come. Um, we're not going to say no, no calling in and saying you're coming. Um, we're, people just come on in and do. We're not going to have the signs out for the seats. This is going to be interesting for me because I don't really know if the signs are where you normally sit. And I know people have a real strong sense of where they sit in the church. So I can't wait till next week to sit here and watch you guys figure out where you're going to sit. That's <laughs> um, but be mindful of others that are the people that are here. Um, if they want a little space, do not get bothered or offended by that or whatever. Be respectful of one another and how we're doing. And, um, and so we're looking forward to that. Um, we're, we're, we're singing, we're getting back to pretty much the basics of what we've been used to before. And as we're doing that, uh, we're gonna do some other changes in, in how we're doing. I've been doing sort of an abbreviated kind of thing. We wanna get ourselves a little more stretched out and do um, with stuff. So um, the big thing is uh, you're not required to have reservations for coming in um, and it's seat yourself. Uh, just be mindful of others where you see. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, but I do appreciate, I know it's been frustrating. Trust me, it's been frustrating for the clergy as well. Um, we're, we're, we're glad that we're moving along and doing. And, and I just will simply say, um, if we see a rise in cases or things that warrant it, um, we're going to have to back up and, and kind of start things over again. So just be mindful of that. <clears throat> all right. But that's all I've got for announcements this morning. Uh, I want to take time uh, for us to set our, our hearts and our minds in an attitude of prayer and praise as we come before God this morning. Let us pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of today that we can share with one another, whether we are here physically in this building, whether we are watching online, whether we're not able to do that we are reminded that your spirit connects us together. So help us, Lord, to grow in our time, to listen, to share, to learn to love one another and those around us. In your name we pray, O Lord. Amen. Uh, we're going to start off with our first music, uh, number 472, Near to the Heart of God. Please rise as you're able. Let us join together to sing. Thank uh -huh.
invite you to please be seated. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Ephesians, Paul's letter to the church of Ephesus. Taking the second chapter, the 11th through the 22nd verses. Ephesians 2, beginning with chapter 11, we hear these words. So then, remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, who <clears throat> you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one, and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body, through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints, and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together, and grows into a holy temple to the Lord, in whom you also are built together, spiritually, into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the gift of your grace and spirit today. We ask, O oh Lord, that that spirit would move among us, that the word we hear, the word we share, would be your word for us, O oh Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. I think that I have been pretty good in not making too many Virginia Tech Hokie references yet, but here we go. So years ago, Virginia Tech was playing Georgia Tech at Georgia Tech. Somewhere along the way, three of the uniforms disappeared between Blacksburg and Atlanta. You need to look like your team. And so an alumnus who discovered what happened, got the next set, flew on a plane to Atlanta, so the teams would have, the players would have them at least by halftime. Until then, they had been given some practice jerseys by George Tech. So they had to fix them a little bit. They had, you know, put tape on the back to cover up the name. Um, I think that Tech was getting sponsored some by Nike and uh, Georgia Tech was Adidas. So they actually had to mark off the symbol for the one company because, you know, the companies run the world, right? Um, and on the tape, they'd like written in the name. They tried to give them the numbers that was their numbers. They would go, but they looked odd. They looked a little different. They were not quite bound together in there. Then at halftime, they were able to change back into their regular jerseys, um, except for Glennon, who was quarterbacking, because he was doing so well, and sports players are so superstitious that he said, I'm not changing jerseys now. And he had an amazing game. He had an amazing game. But that sense of we want to look like one another, we want to be you know, in that same outfit. It helps us to have a sense of 
of connection. We know who one another are. It's important if you're playing football, then you know who you're supposed to tackle and who not. It's important if you're playing baseball, you know who to throw the ball to, right? Depends on which team you're rooting for. I see. Okay. All right. You want to have in different places, you need to know who you are. In the military, you have uniforms that bind you together. So trying to have ways to connect people is very important. In Paul's time, as the Christian church is branching out, initially it was just a renewal movement within the Jewish faith. So it was only Jews. Uh, you look in, in the Bible stories, Jesus doesn't really deal a lot with Gentiles. A couple of times he does, uh, with some amazing results in there, but his focus is upon the Jews. And for the early church, the, the, the early Christian church is part of the Jewish faith, they modeled that too. But they found there were people from outside the faith who wanted to belong, who heard the message, who were so impressed by what Jesus had said and taught, who were impressed by the, the examples of the disciples and those who had, that they, they just were so touched and they wanted to be a part of the church. And so the conversation began. Well, what do they have to do? They gotta follow the rules. The same things we do so that we're all together to eat the same things. Avoid eating the, the, the same things. I can do that. We want you to wear the same kind of outfit. I can do that. We want you to get circumcised. Wait a minute. Um, can we retalk this thing, right? And so the argument became what is the what is the definition? What do you need to have? Paul dealt with that in a lot of churches. We like to think the Christian faith of old was so bound together and wonderful and just, no, no. They fought over everything. So Paul wrote to the church and he said, okay, let me try to explain this to you again. And he starts here not telling the Jews how to be critical, but critical on them, but he starts with the Gentiles. Remember that you at one time, Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision, a physical circumcision made in flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at one time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. You were not part of, of us. Paul was Jew. He gives that argument in another letter. I'm a Jew, born Jewish. I have my credentials. I was faithful to the church. I was so faithful. I persecuted the Christians till Christ spoke to me. He's a Jew among Jews. And he's saying, remember, you guys were not part of the group. If you're watching online and you're a little younger, you're going to miss this reference. But stay with me, I'll come back. Do you remember the Little Rascals show? Yeah, okay. Date myself, the people are going, wow, Mark, knew that? Um, and they had the He-Man Woman Haters Club, right? No girls allowed. And they had arguments over that. You know, it's one thing to say no girls allowed until you like the girl. Then, wait a minute. So they had their definition of who they were but then they had to figure out how to go forward and, and move along. This is the early Christian church trying to figure out how they make this all work. So Paul tells the Gentiles, before you get more upset, remember who you are. You're the outsiders. You're the aliens and the strangers here. God makes reference to aliens and strangers in earlier times about the people's faith needing to make sure that they are respectful and caring of them. It's not an accident that Paul uses those words. Even in the Sabbath, you're supposed to rest, your family's supposed to rest. <clears throat> the aliens, the strangers around you, you got to give them rest too. Everyone takes a break. 
So he wants the uncircumcised, the Gentiles, to know their place as we start, but even then he's speaking to the church there. You were at one time without Christ, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. You were lost. You were, you were doing other things. You didn't know about this. You didn't know about how God had made these promises to keep people going, to help them, to take care of them, to teach them, to love them, to try to help them build a community. That's what God is doing throughout the whole story of the Bible, it's trying to build and rebuild community. The Ten Commandments. How do you live in community? You don't steal from one another. You take care of each other. You have one focus. We're putting people together. Now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Jesus died for the whole world. And if we're going to believe that, Paul says, then God accept that you've been brought a little closer than we had originally thought. We, we've got to understand that you've been invited in by Jesus. And if we're going to say that we follow Jesus, then we're stuck. We've got to figure out how to get along with you. For he is our peace in his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. Paul is speaking to a place where they are arguing and they are disagreeing and they are fiercely arguing. He didn't say broken down the wall the, the, the disagreements among you. He didn't say the uncomfortable things among you. He wasn't saying when you're getting ready for the church potluck, who was going to bring the cookies and who was going to bring the cake kind of argument. And what kind of cookies were you going to bring? They had serious difficulties with one another. And he said, Christ came and brought peace. He's knocked that all down. He's gotten rid of the hostility, supposed to have gotten rid of the hostility. And brought us together so that now you're not outside now we're all here for he is our peace in his flesh he has made both groups into one remember that conversation we had earlier that little thing about the whole circumcision thing and whatnot that's he said that's a cut made by human hands now, Jesus is taking care of that, and in his flesh, he has made the difference. In, in his flesh, in his body, through the crucifixion, he has made a difference for us that changes our lives. It changes the lives of the Gentiles that they are just beginning to understand, that they are just coming to be a part of, that they are just coming to get that, that sense of the faith. But he's also truly speaking to those who are members of the church there and going, you know, see, Christ did this. I didn't do it. They didn't come with sledgehammers and knock down the wall. If we're going to be those who follow Christ, then we got to accept Christ has said, I want peace between the two groups. Let's get together and work together, building community. Building community. And it's done by God because God knows we need help in getting rid of the hostility. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in the place of the two, thus making peace. Jewish people were trying to be faithful. There is nothing wrong with that. They had been taught how to be, what it meant to be faithful followers of God, and they were doing that, and there's nothing wrong with that. 
But he said, Christ came and made a difference. He's taken that down. And now in our understanding of him, in our learning of him, he's brought us together. And that changes the world. See, Paul knows the church is going to be the example to the others around about what it means to be followers of Christ. I heard one of those stories. I, I will be honest. I do not know if it is true, but it would not surprise me. Then uh, there was a small little country church in a place, and the people got into an argument there. They got into one of those deep theological arguments. What color the hymnals should be. Have y'all had that one yet? No. Okay. It's coming. It always is. It always is. Some people wanted them to be red so they would represent the blood of Christ. Some wanted them to be blue to represent how the blood of Christ had gone out of, over the world. And they could not agree on that. So in the middle of the night, little small country church, one group came and took some chainsaws and cut the church in half. And they carried their half away. I don't know if that's true. I cannot swear to that example, but I believe with my whole heart that happened somewhere. And the person telling the story said, what kind of example is that to the people of the community to see half a church running down the street? And we laugh at that, but we do that all the time. In the ways that we can disagree and argue. In the ways that we can fight and not get along. Paul says, Jesus has made a difference. We're not supposed to do that anymore. Why? Because we're an example. I'm, we're an example. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a word that you might be uncomfortable with. Evangelist. You think about evangelists, you might think immediately about the people on the TV, right? You might think of uh, Billy Graham. Wasn't on TV, went around places then. The, the, they're people that are, are fancy, well-known, right? People respect or people hate. I got bad news for you. Who in here has heard the story of Christ? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. You are evangelists because that's what it means. It means someone that's heard the good news. You are evangelists. And when people see you, they're, they're going to go, what does it mean to them to be part of the church? And the example that you give is very meaningful. I, I, did I tell you guys the story about the car that passed me one day? You always hear that. You always hear this story. I actually had it happen to me. I was going down. I was serving back up in Franklin County, and I was going down at a Roanoke. I was going down 220, and this car behind me was getting impatient. And I'm like trying to get over, but then he ducks over. And so I'm like, whatever you need to do, fine. I'm just going to sit right here. And he shot past me. And it was one of those, had a hatchback with that open glass thing there. And as he got past me, he gave me a finger gesture. And it was not pleasant. And right under that window was that Christian fish symbol. <laughs> and I thought, I've heard that joke all over the place. But there I was experiencing that, and I said, please tell me that you've borrowed somebody's car. Please tell me that's not yours, because that's your example about what it means to be Christian. Paul knows that the church here has a lot of work to do, and they can't be arguing among themselves. They're trying to reach out to other people, and they're trying to reach out to other Jews, they're trying to reach out to other Gentiles, and if they can't get along in the church, What's going to say they can get along somewhere else? We've got to be able to do it here. And he says, 
It's okay, we can, because God is about doing this. Jesus is the one that came and helped us. Jesus came and taught us. He gives us peace so that we can go forward and be the people we are supposed to be. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through both of us, through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. Access in one, not access to one spirit, access in one spirit to the Father. We join together in that spirit and we are lifted up to God. Can we do that? Don't nod yes too quick. Can we do that? Can we be the people who are going to be brought together by God's Spirit that are brought together by the sacrifice and the blood of Jesus Christ who are brought together to share in that one Spirit that lifts us up? Because we're not lifting ourselves up on our own. You who are, who are no longer strangers, who are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also the members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. God's, God's found the house, his foundation is built upon the teachings of those who have shared the story of Christ built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. You know what the cornerstone does. The cornerstone is what you lay first, and it lines up everything you need to go after that. It's, it's the one that sets everything in place. Jesus is the cornerstone. He's lined it up. The apostles and the prophets are building this house for God. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple to the Lord. We are part of that holy temple. You ever been someplace where the walls are not quite even? Where someone wasn't paying attention when they laid the bricks down? I know someone... Um, one of the churches, some people wanted to have a renovation done part of the building. The church had been built years ago by members of the church. They were very proud of that. And I came by one day to see the area that was being renovated, and they had hired somebody to do that. As I walked in there and I said, so how's it going? He looked at me and he went, nothing matches in here. Everything's off a little bit. The church that we have is built by the hands of God through us, lined up with the cornerstone that is Jesus to be God's holy temple so that we, the evangelists, can go forward and carry the message that God loves you, that God wants you to be a part of who we are. And that means when we invite somebody in, we can't have them come in the back door and hear us talking about one another. Can you believe what they wore today? Do you know what I heard about them this week? Do you think that uh, you can't do that? Because they're going to walk in the door and go, huh, same as everywhere else, <laughs> and walk off. Yes, we are the same people as everywhere else, but we have to strive to do better. We have to strive to be better and we are empowered by God to do so through Jesus Christ and the spirit that lifts us up. Know God's grace today. Know God's peace today and be reminded that we are brought together in that spirit. We are brought together in Christ's sacrifice. We are brought together to be the temple of God. Let us pray.
Gracious Father, we thank you for today, for the gifts that you give to us, for the love that you show to us, for the care that you provide for us. Help us, O oh Lord, to be your people. Not simply in word, but in deed. Help us to be your people who are being built together in a community to be your home, your temple in the world. Help us, O oh Lord, to see how you have broken down the divisions between us, that we might know peace, so that we might share your peace with others. In your name we pray, O oh Lord. Amen. I want to take a moment now to, um, um, actually let's sing first, my order here. <laughs> We're going to sing number 437, this is my song, please rise as you're able, let us join together to sing. Say the wrong name that my brain is going all over the place today. This is my song. I, yeah. Okay. Good. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, it's been a long weekend. Um, we want to take time for uh, the prayers of our community. Uh, reminder again that those uh, prayer cards are in the uh, in the pre in the pews. Uh, should be a pencil there. If you um, have a prayer you want lifted up. 
you're welcome to lift it up now, but still write it down so we have it, because uh, um, it makes it easiest for us to keep track. So um, are those prayers you want to lift up? How is your dear husband doing in his time in the hospital? Well, it will be two more days. Two more days. He hopes. He, he hopes. The nurses are wonderful. The doctors are wonderful. So I'd rather be all done than to come home and then take me back. That makes yeah. sense. That makes and sense. The vials are very good, but they do have a little bleeding spot in the side of his upper that they, they hope that will stop. Okay. Gotcha. Just trying to get that little bit of bleeding stop. But otherwise, he's doing okay. And and accepting that he needs to be there. It's been 10 days now? It's been two weeks. It's been two weeks, yeah, yeah. So, um, but I, I can appreciate, I, I know how quickly people want to be out of the hospital, but to be able to say, I want to be here until I've gotten done what I need to do, um, and then I can go, that's good. I'm glad that he has that attitude with that. Others who want to lift up today? Um, Mark and so thank you for your call. Oh, the hospital. I just thank everybody for the calls, the prayers, and the cards. Um, so um, I've still got some issues that uh, will be taken care of, and uh, it was a surprise. I wasn't expecting to be there, but it was God is good because he, I, I was supposed to be there, so He's going to fix everything. Good, yeah. good, good. Well, continue to pray, baby Sienna. Baby Sienna. Mm -hmm. and, uh, God gives light in her little eyes of darkness. Yeah, yeah. Have they had their visit with the doctor yet? Next week. Next week. Next week. Um, baby Sienna was born is having some visual visual issues, and they're concerned about how extensive that's going to be. So they see the doctor next week, and hopefully they're going to get good word about things that are going. Others who want to lift up today? Gotcha, gotcha. Clara Dyson fell um, and has, uh, she's okay, but has bruises on her face. So we want to be mindful and prayerful for her. Um, reach out to her and let her know that she's thinking about it. I guess I should mention my son um, had his leg injured when my dog jumped on him, jumped on his leg, and he's having an MRI Wednesday um, to see if it's torn um, medial collateral. So your dog. Jumped on your son. Yes. I, I like that. I like that. She owns up to it right away. It's all her fault. Your dog <laughs> jumped on your son and has hurt his leg. Yes, because and I've heard that a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard that. You've heard that. So, yes. um, but yeah, no, the medial and collateral ligaments in there, that's, uh, yeah, that's going to be difficult. So. And then yeah. I left for a week to go on vacation and left him with the other <laughs> So I've been hearing it, so you might pray for me. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are watching and didn't catch that, she had her dog, not had her dog, her dog jumped on her son, hurt his knee, and then she went off for vacation and left her son to take care of the dog. <laughs> wow. You may call into the church and express your whatever about that. Okay. Yeah, don't get my number. Yeah, don't get my number. No, and I, we make light, but we want him to be okay. Yeah, and and for you to have peace in that, too. Others? I go to my heart doctor this week, and hopefully he and he can tell me what's going on. All right, good. Good, I know you've been kind of struggling with stuff. So going to the heart doctor this week, Peggy. And um, so we look for good answers for you this week. Also, um, remember Maddie Wilkinson was having some issues with one of her legs, had to have an MRI, and I think she's still waiting for the results of that. Maddie Wilkinson, waiting for results on an MRI on her knee. Gotcha. Um, this, this weekend, I mentioned about, um, uh, I was up in Bedford Friday and Saturday. I had the very great honor of um, uh, Dear friend of us, uh, one, of Dory's, one of Dory's best friends, um, her father died. And uh, they asked me to come and do the service for them. Um, I was very honored to be a part of that. Uh, I, I married his second wife with him um, seven years ago. We were talking about that. And um, 
and so they wanted me to come and do the service. Um, Vietnam veteran, um, Navy pilot, um, and uh, great stories to hear uh, from the family as we talked about uh, his just love of life, and his family and all. And so, um, so yeah, I'd be with uh, the Dixon family as uh, they're going through that process of grief, grieving, and um, trying to move forward, finding God's peace. So, let us take time to go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for today. We thank you for being with those who are in need of your healing touch, knowing that you are there with them. For those who are in the hospital, for those who are awaiting tests and their results, for those who are home, but having questions about what the next step in life will be. We ask you, O Lord, to be with all of these people, hold them in your healing grace, that they may know your love in what we do. We ask you, Lord, to help us in our times when we need to celebrate, to celebrate. The last year and a half have felt dark and dreary, and we have wondered where the light would be, and we have seen the light breaking in. Let us celebrate that. Let us celebrate the moments of life that remind us of your presence, of your grace, of the hope that we share in you. And help us, O oh Lord, to overcome the difficulties that keep us apart from one another, that we may be bound together in your spirit of love and grace. Gracious Lord, you sent your Son to live to die, and to be resurrected for us, that in him we might be one people. Help us to remember all of these things before we speak, before we act, that in all that we do, we might share your love with the world. Be with us here at Woods United Methodist Church. Be with the churches across our district and our district superintendent, Jay Carey. We ask you to be with the churches across the Virginia Conference and Bishop Lewis. We ask you to be, O oh Lord, with the Methodist churches around the world as we face our own struggles, as we face trying to understand our identity. We ask you, Lord, to be with our brother and sister congregations around the world that we too may find the ways to separate out our differences in practice from our similarities in belief. And be with those, O oh Lord, who do not know you. That those they encounter that share the message of God may share it in a way that is loving and caring lets them know about your grace and not in a way that proves to be a stumbling block for them. All of that begins, O oh Lord, in our times of prayer. And when we struggle with the words to say, O oh Lord, we remember the words that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I've kind of um, messed things up a little bit before, so I need an acolyte up here. Yeah. That's my fault. Sorry about that. 